That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In the history of space exploration, one mission stands prominently, Apollo 10. It propelled humans through the vast emptiness to reach the surface of the moon. Beneath the surface of that space triumph exists a concealed truth so significant and contentious that it has deterred NASA from revisiting our lunar companion for years. What mysteries might be concealed in the lunar shadows, and what's the reason behind the moon being an off-limits frontier for humanity's revisit? Join us on this exploration as we reveal the undisclosed realities of the Apollo astronauts and the rationale behind NASA's prolonged absence from the moon. We witnessed a race to the moon, and now there's a parallel race to Mars with a more crowded field of participants. In the early 1960s, the United States ambitiously planned to send humans to the moon, publicly revealed by President John F. Kennedy's address to Congress on May 25, 1961. In his speech, he asserted, I think we should completely aim for landing on the moon by the end of this decade. Let's make it happen. The mission to safely land humans on the moon and bring them back intact gained momentum. However, just weeks before Kennedy's announcement, Russia grabbed attention by launching Yuri Gagarin into space aboard a space capsule. He orbited the Earth, returning without incident, securing the title of the first person in space. While America wasn't thrilled with this development, they were determined to achieve their own stellar accomplishment, the first person on the moon. This lunar mission wasn't a mere hop, skip, and jump. It was America's opportunity to reclaim prominence in the global space race. Five years after Kennedy's proclamation, the first Apollo space capsule was prepared to launch into orbit. On January 27, 1967, at Cape Canaveral Spaceport in sunny Florida, a rehearsal unfolded before a significant rocket launch. What was supposed to be a routine test for the three astronauts turned into a tragic event. The trio found themselves trapped in the space capsule for hours, and suddenly, a fire broke out. The space capsule's door wouldn't open, sealing the fate of astronauts Gus Grissom, Edward H. White, and Roger B. Chaffee. Sadly, they lost their lives in the flames before their space journey could commence. The entire nation was deeply affected by the news, but despite the somber atmosphere, Kennedy remained focused on the lunar goal. Just 18 months later, Apollo 7 successfully orbited our blue planet marking a triumph in humanity's pursuit of the stars. In March 1969, as we grappled with the challenges of landing on the moon, the Apollo 8 crew took center stage. These individuals were the first to observe the dark side of the moon, and it wasn't merely a cosmic sightseeing tour. The Apollo 8 mission, overshadowed by the moon landing, resembled a lunar investigation. Astronauts embarked on a journey to explore the mysterious far side of the moon, hidden from view, even with advanced telescopes. According to enthusiasts of the unexplained and mystery enthusiasts, Apollo 8 supposedly had a hidden agenda. Speculation suggested that something less than friendly lurked on the far side, and NASA was determined not to let it keep its secrets. They embarked on a lunar expedition to uncover the mysteries of the moon's shadowed side, Telescopes couldn't unveil the lunar secrets, and rumors hinted at ominous elements concealed in the moon's perpetual darkness. Apollo 8 played out more like a cosmic detective mission aiming to illuminate the enigmatic dark side of the moon. When Kennedy and NASA chose to launch Apollo 8, questions arose about the potential uncertainties. Today, some answers might be found. Astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders officially reported no peculiar sightings during their 10 orbits around the Moon. The Moon received a green light, deemed safe. The first human journey to that extent proved successful, indicating no apparent obstacles to an actual landing. In that same month, the Apollo 9 crew attempted something interesting. 
they practice transitioning from the space shuttle to the landing capsule while orbiting Earth. Subsequently, Apollo 10 replicated this process in lunar orbit, excluding the actual landing. On the bright morning of July 16, 1969, something incredibly remarkable occurred. The Apollo 11 mission commenced its renowned journey from the Kennedy Space Center, transporting two astronauts who had gained celebrity status by then, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. After traversing space for an impressive 76 hours, Apollo 11 finally entered the moon's orbit on July 19th. The next day, precisely at 1.46 p.m. local time in Houston, Texas, the control center erupted with excitement as the lunar module carrying Armstrong and Aldrin separated from the command module, where Collins held his position. Two hours later, the lunar module gently touched down on the moon's southwestern edge of Mare Tranquilitatis. Armstrong, known for his way with words, stated, The Eagle has landed. However, the pivotal moment occurred at 10.56 p.m. when Armstrong spoke those famous words just before setting foot on the lunar surface. That's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. In under 20 minutes, Aldrin descended from the spaceship, marking the second person to touch the moon's surface. We wisely refrained from saying, Houston, there's a light out there. What transpired next became legendary. Six more Apollo missions launched, with five flawlessly landing on the lunar terrain. Apollo 13 faced challenges when, shortly after launch, a service module crashed. This led to a tense rescue mission as they hurried back to Earth, missing the chance to leave their mark on the moon. In December 1972, Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt concluded the lunar chapter, being the last to stroll on the moon. With no human lunar stroll for over half a century, interestingly, NASA never felt the moon's gravity tugging them back. Thus, the moon remains undisturbed, awaiting the next human to take that significant leap once again. Beyond the moon missions, a vast, unexplored space awaited the touch of human curiosity. The pioneers were not astronauts, but robotic adventurers like Pioneer, Mariner, and Voyager. They journeyed into distant corners of our solar system, unveiling the secrets of celestial bodies that had remained mysteries until then. The moon, once the star of the show, lost its luster. Human interest waned, and the Apollo 17 landing, once a spectacle, became a quiet event witnessed by only a few. While the world collectively held its breath during the Apollo 11 landing, subsequent missions struggled to capture the same attention. Whispers among experts hinted that NASA, after the nerve-wracking Apollo 13, was proceeding cautiously. The fear of potential astronaut loss loomed over every Apollo mission. It seemed the space agency, having pushed boundaries, didn't want to press its luck indefinitely. The era of lunar exploration faded making room for the allure of more distant and mysterious cosmic frontiers. The U.S. government eventually revealed details years after Apollo 11's moonwalk. In the footage, we see Richard Nixon donning his eulogy hat. I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes, but in all my years of public life, I have never profited, never paying respects to the astronaut trio Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. If things went haywire up there in space, your TV screens might have flickered to life with Nixon's face delivering a pre-recorded message. In his speech, cue the odd vibes, Nixon showers praise on these cosmic daredevils, highlighting their courage. According to him, these individuals didn't venture into lunar exploration without a reason. Their motivation, the pride of the nation. Brace yourselves as the Apollo Emergency Program revealed some surprising details. NASA, the key players in spacesuit technology, presented Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins with a cosmic ultimatum. In case of emergencies, they faced two options, confront the unknown or craft their own lunar farewells. On January 5, 1972, President Nixon delivered significant news. No more moon landings post-Apollo 17. The Apollo program encountered a substantial setback due to insufficient government funding. The moon missions of the 60s proved too costly, leaving NASA's budget seriously depleted. The entire venture, 
spanning from 1961 to 1972, incurred a cost of more than $25 billion, adjusted for today's prices, over $150 billion. It became one of the most expensive government endeavors. Despite the substantial financial drain, Apollo contributed significantly to advancements in science and engineering. Additionally, it marked a notable victory for the U.S. in the space race against the Soviet Union. However, after investing heavily in NASA for over a decade to reach the moon, public interest began to wane. Both taxpayers and politicians shifted their focus away from extravagant lunar missions. NASA's ambitious plans for a lunar outpost faced a firm rejection when funding was sought, rendering it unattainable without the necessary financial support or a robust approval. Instead of establishing a presence on the moon, NASA had to pause and reevaluate due to the lack of funds and a definitive green light. They redirected their efforts towards space missions that were more cost-effective. The notion of sending individuals back to the moon for a permanent settlement seemed financially daunting. NASA, grappling with new budget constraints, harbored a major concern. What if astronauts, navigating the moon's uneven surface and wonky gravity, encountered cardiac issues in the uncharted territory? The gravitational challenges extended beyond lunar craters. Cosmic worries compounded. NASA's primary apprehension centered on the impact of prolonged exposure to low gravity and heightened radiation. Unlike the brief lunar stints during the Apollo missions, where space explorers experienced a cosmic weekend getaway lasting about three days, the prospect of months or years spent on the moon remained unpredictable. Establishing a camp on the lunar surface might give astronauts the illusion of a space vacation, but the potential cumulative effects of reduced gravity and increased radiation remained an uncharted health threat. NASA likened it to subjecting the crew to a planet-sized quarantine fraught with significant risks to their well-being. NASA wasn't enthusiastic about transforming the moon into a permanent abode. The associated risks and uncertainties resembled a cosmic puzzle they weren't prepared to decipher. While the Apollo missions demonstrated the feasibility of brief lunar visits, turning it into a habitable space for humans presented an entirely different set of challenges. It mirrored the difficulty of ensuring human survival in an inhospitable environment. The hurdles were formidable, ranging from health concerns to engineering complications and numerous unknowns requiring resolution. NASA hesitated to commit to permanent lunar missions without preliminary testing using automated probes, but insufficient funding hindered the necessary research. Post-Apollo missions, the vision of establishing a human colony on the moon became even more challenging. Harsh lunar conditions, marked by hostile temperatures, lack of atmosphere, and constant threats from micrometeoroids, underscored the considerable risks involved. Establishing any structure or habitat on the moon's surface posed constant threats with the perpetual fear of breakages or damage that could jeopardize human life. Moreover, the lack of robust backup options in case of emergencies exacerbated the challenges of lunar living. Beyond the engineering intricacies, building homes on the moon entailed addressing a multitude of other hurdles. The lunar environment presented a substantial puzzle. Crafting shelters resilient enough to withstand lunar weather was a priority. Additionally, intricate life support systems akin to lunar companions were essential for preserving human well-being. However, the challenges didn't end there. Essential resources such as oxygen, water, and fuel were imperative. Without them, a lunar home was merely a sophisticated container. Securing these necessities resembled a search for treasures on the moon, vital for the sustenance of a lunar base. The logistics of transporting humans to the moon and back added another layer of complexity. It wasn't just about an exciting rocket journey. It involved transporting substantial payloads into lunar orbit to establish a presence on the moon. Unfortunately, the challenge lay in the absence of rockets potent enough for this task. Following the successful 1972 lunar landing, NASA encountered a complex dilemma. The absence of sustained political support left the space agency in a cosmic limbo. 
The initial fervor driven by President Kennedy's ambitious goal had fueled the nation's anticipation for over a decade. However, once the lunar landing was achieved, NASA found itself adrift without a clear trajectory or sense of cosmic purpose. Budget constraints and the necessity to adapt to new missions set by lawmakers and the White House forced a recalibration. The transition from lunar focus to determining the next significant step became a pivotal moment for NASA, akin to navigating uncharted cosmic possibilities. The political shift from lunar exploration to low-Earth orbit challenged NASA's game plan, disappointing those enthusiastic about lunar colonies. Nevertheless, NASA had to adapt to this new reality, as space exploration enthusiasts proposed alternative goals like reusable space transportation systems, space stations, advanced scientific instruments, and robotic missions to other planets. Instead of adhering to the status quo, NASA's leaders opted for fresh challenges and sought new opportunities for advancement. The shift away from the moon wasn't arbitrary, it aligned with changes in public interest. After the initial excitement of the Apollo moon landing, the enthusiasm for lunar settlements waned making it challenging to garner consistent support for further lunar projects. The Nixon administration played a transformative role by advocating teamwork and international collaboration. The Apollo-Soyuz test project exemplified this approach, where Americans and Soviets not only joined forces, but also shared resources and knowledge, elevating space exploration to new heights. By the year 2000, NASA's financial prospects improved significantly, largely due to the Hubble Space Telescope, securing an annual budget exceeding $20 billion. The focus on space exploration gained widespread support, marking a shift from earlier protests. NASA, now supported by enthusiastic Americans, is gearing up for a cosmic comeback to the moon with the Artemis program. Artemis, long tucked away in NASA's secret plans, gained momentum when SpaceX and Blue Origin entered the scene, disrupting NASA from its lunar inertia. The rush to action in 2017 was prompted by Elon Musk's lunar ambitions in 2018. Suddenly, Artemis secured a VIP ticket to the lunar party. As of 2024, Artemis is poised to make a triumphant return to the lunar stage. Delays in Artemis shuttle launches have turned the endeavor into a cosmic game of musical chairs, raising whispers about potential abandonment. While Artemis 1 took off in November 2022, without humans, international interest remains peaked, with the real excitement expected when Artemis 2 lands on the moon in 2024. The moon, once considered a barren and weary celestial body, now beckons exploration with recent research challenging previous notions. Advanced probes like the Lunar Orbiter have provided unprecedented views, reigniting curiosity about the Moon's origin and composition. Contrary to assumptions, the Moon may have a complex cosmic history, potentially being a former petite planet. Discoveries ranging from an active core to intriguing lunar landscapes suggest a more vibrant lunar past. Cracks and moonquakes hint at untold stories within the Moon's rocky embrace. Scientists have uncovered extensive water reservoirs and rare geological formations, prompting further exploration by the pioneers destined to inhabit the moon. The Artemis mission, promising to rewrite lunar history, will unite astronauts, astrobiologists, and botanists for an extended lunar stay. Plans include not just habitation modules, but also greenhouses for cultivating lunar-grown food to nourish the first inhabitants of our celestial neighbor. Thanks for watching today's video. Please be sure to subscribe for more videos.